Welcome to episode 19 of the Road to Glasgow. I'm Mossy, he's Robbo. We're in a home amongst the gum trees here in Newcastle upon Tyne. Robbo, what's been happening this week? Look, Mossy, we've uh, travelled across the world and we're here. It's great to be in the UK. Uh, we made it to Glasgow, but more of that very shortly. But, mate, there's, uh, there's only three days to go now. That is one, two, three days. It'll be even less by the time you uh, start maybe watching this. So we're on the eve of the greatest games ever. I'm confident they're going to be that and uh, absolutely can't wait. Everyone around the streets here in England and also in, in Scotland are just talking up the Commonwealth Games. They're seeing the wonderful displayed uh, outfits out there, mate. Uh, and there's been plenty of action going on this week. Yeah, big news coming out of the village. Well, uh, they've got a bar in there, uh, which is great news. Uh, it's called the Ninth Lane and it'll be running. I think it's open already and I believe it'll be serving refreshments for the athletes uh, for the duration of the game. So that's great to, to see that. And the Aussies, as you can see here, have been given the green light to uh, to refresh themselves as needed. So the chief, Monaghetti, he's given the thumbs up and said, uh, you know, do it sensibly, but yeah, go for your life. And it's, if it's good enough for the chief, then it's good enough for me, that's for sure. Now, I hear some of the athletes in the village have uh, got the shits as well. Well, um, luckily, it's not the athletes at this stage, but the security staff, there's 53 of them have been reported, uh, a pretty severe case of the norovirus, uh, diarrhoea and vomiting and just things you don't want in an athlete's village at all. So uh, that's that's cool caused great concern in the village. Uh, the athletics team I know has delayed their entrance to the village, um, but hopefully that all gets cleared up and uh, yeah, no one's going to get sick. And mostly the other news is uh, you might see across the uh, the media conferences during the games, uh, you've got the panel that you can see here. Here's the chief and this is uh, with the table tennis athletes and you've got the water station and the iron brew there. Now we're going to send, send a challenge to the entire Aussie team. When you're having your press conference, we want to see you crack the top of an iron brew bottle take a sip and uh, if you're even more daring you could do something like what we saw Mossy do a few episodes ago on Road to Glasgow and down the whole thing in one go. How was that for you Mossy? Mate it was brilliant I've still got uh, the bubbles of iron brew uh, <laughs> nestled up there in the uh, nostrils I imagine it would make answering your next question a bit of a challenge so uh, we look forward to doing that and there it is. Now Mossy we can't move on without mentioning Alex Rowe. He has equaled the Aussie 800 metre national record of Ralph Dobell 144.40. Did that at the Monaco Diamond League. Who knows what what he's going to do at the uh, with Glasgow Commonwealth Games. He's on fire. Talk about being on fire. We were on the uh, the plane over. We noticed that the what we call now the hottie ruse uh, had made a decision to change their flights just to be with us uh, on on the flight over to uh, Glasgow from Dubai. Yeah, uh, mate. They uh, they had a sensational time with us. They certainly did. And I tell you who else had a great flight, and that was Clyde. His first long haul international flight. Uh, as you can see here, that we, he got strapped in. He was in uh, some beautiful leg room, extra leg room seats. There's not a lot of legs on him, but somehow he pulled extra leg room uh, and. And he also caught up with the Emirates uh, hostesses and uh, was able to wear the Emirates ha hat. That was a special moment for him. And it was a huge hit, as we said there, with a hottie ruse. And, uh, a huge what, Mossy? Uh, hit. Oh, oh sorry. Nice. Good. Slap or push, which <laughs> yeah. they say in hockey as well. Um, great stuff there. Yeah, it was a huge hit with the ho hottie ruse. Um, we had a chance to actually catch up with them on the flight and here's how it panned out. We're here on the plane, heading to Glasgow with a couple of hockey roos. Let's just call it the hottie roos. Just ask them a quick question. Uh, Ash, what's been your highlight so far on the, the trip? Meeting you guys has uh, really made my week. Actually, probably uh, here. still fun. I was still fun. Um, actually, the uh, chicken or the biryani was quite good too. Now, what are your expectations uh, for the games as far as the village goes? What are you looking forward to? Uh, lots of Clyde hanging around. We've got a little hidden one over here. The girl from, uh, <laughs> Crookle, from talking to someone from uh, Crookle, how many uh, potatoes can you eat in one sit? Oh, I reckon 15. 15? <laughs> how do you have your potatoes? I do like good mash, but boiled chunky. Boiled? <laughs> <laughs> boiled I actually hate <laughs> boiled. <laughs> And that, my friends, is the Hottie Roos. <laughs>
Now, Robbo, it wouldn't be a Saturday morning anywhere in the world, and especially for you, uh, than a park run, without a park run. Now, I love my park run, free 5Ks every Saturday, and I uh, had to do the Newcastle park run, and we were requested on behalf of the Australian Distance Running uh, Organisation to go along and just help some of our marathoners. So Marty Dent and Mel Paniotu came out and... Uh, what yeah, was that? Paniotu. It's, uh, it's, it rolls off the tongue beautifully. She's uh, one of our debutante uh, Com Games athletes doing the marathon. She's a vet. Uh, but we caught up with them. We did the park run. I actually led them out um, and did a bit of pacing for Marty for about 100 metres and pacing for Mel for about uh, a K or so. But it was a good head out for them. Uh, as, and as you can see it here, you know, they, they just love soaking it up. It's great to see the Aussies there. But Mossy, we had an exclusive uh, interview with them in the back of the car on the way home from park run. Let's hear it now. In the back seat with Robo. Yes, thank you very much. And we're here in the back seat, just taking a couple of our marathoners back to their hotel. Guys, how does it feel to be in the car with Mossy and Robo? Oh, it's an experience of a lifetime for me. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty special. Yeah, that's good. Now, Mel, uh, tell us uh, about your giraffe. Um, we had a baby giraffe born on my second last day at work. You and Marty. Yeah, <laughs> it's very special. Un I was a carrier. <laughs> we weren't able to get her on the plane, which is a bit of a shame. So, yeah, you're missing your baby. Back. You're missing your baby. Yeah, missing the baby. Doesn't even have a name yet. Now, Marty, you've got four kids. I don't expect you sit in the back seat in the middle very often. Oh, I do. When we're crammed, usually there's two car seats oh. on each either side. So, but we do have an eight seater. So, yeah, there's a bit more space probably. And what car do you drive, Mel? Uh, Volkswagen Polo GTI. Marty? Um, a Kia Carnival 8-seater. Very good. This, this uh, interview is being sponsored by BMW. What are we driving, driver? <laughs> BMW 1 Series. Lovely. That's that's the style that we get here. The Australian <laughs> athletics team, they get treated with all class. Marty, can you tell me, uh, you've got a choice, mate. Haggis or deep fried Mars bar and why? Ah, I suppose... I'd probably give, have a crack at the Haggis if you want to once in a lifetime sort of opportunity I think so I'd have to go that but if it was during a marathon I think the, the <laughs> I'd probably go down a bit better well, that's yeah. funny because I've heard that they're going to be having a, a selection of haggis and deep fried Mars bars at the aid stations in the marathon so you got that to look forward to what about Mel yourself you're a uh, vet so I'd be interested in hearing uh, about uh, haggis or deep fried Mars bar for you I actually don't know what haggis is can I ask you I sure? believe it involves a sheep ah righty I think I might go with the Mars bar. Okay. Back seat with Robbo. Thank you. And that's been the back seat. We're still driving. It's, uh, it's a bit wet, it's a bit uh, rainy, but we'll wrap things up there. That's been Marty Dent, Mel Paniatau, and the proud mother of a new giraffe. And we'll catch up with you soon. And how about a round of applause for the driver? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Go Russell! So there you go, the elite marathon is enjoying life in the back of the car there, the BMW <laughs> Robbo. Now uh, that is the, all we've got time for now. This is the, uh, the 19th episode of The Road to Glasgow, the final one with only three days to go. We're going to release that just for you in a couple of days and uh, looking forward to that, getting back to Glasgow for the Double X Games to give you the Double X episode. And as always, Robbo, Clyde and everyone out there, don't forget to run, jump and chuck. So Robbo, you finally found your gates head. The real gates head. How you feeling? Relieved and excited in equal parts.